Man, you know you out in a country where they'd be serving gator. <laughs> so today on project shop we're going to take a little road trip up north a little bit we're going to head up to the country and uh, see what we get now he told me i need to bring a trailer so whatever he's got is not going to fit in the back of my truck and i'm hoping that it's worth the trip dragging all this stuff up here normally it is of nowhere and traffic been backed up for freaking miles it looks like we got some type of rollover or something going on up here you gotta stay safe folks pay attention whatever it is they got a couple wreckers up there i can't see with all these vehicles almost looks like some skid marks right there Dragging shit off. Oh, what's the record? What's he got? He got something on the back. Oh. Looks like a box trailer or something, or a camper. Oh no, that was someone's camper. Man, that sucks. I hope everybody was all right. ton of stuff over here um i don't want to record there because you know that's just personal property and whatnot so uh wait till you see what i got man you know you out in the country where they'd be serving gator for <laughs> lunch but well, we got some chicken uh and some potato wedges we're gonna eat i'm not with all that gator shit but check this out we got some frosty root here And some cool mountain black cherry. I like drinking soda out of uh, glass. It tastes so much better. All right, let me show you what you got here. We got about 3,000 pounds of batteries. Some of these actually are probably still good. These ones here came out of a golf cart. But most of these came out of backup systems and there's a couple of them here that are super heavy man uh he said they were really expensive batteries we ain't got nothing rubbing bam we got a nice little load had to dig this stuff out of the dirt but uh pretty much i got all these lights i threw them a hundred dollars for it um but he was like i'll oh, just you know just take them you ain't gotta pay me for them there's uh quite a few of these that got transformers in them we got a big old transformer. I know it's hard to see in here, but I got that cart, got a bunch of transformers in it. There's a little bit of copper wire, and then he gave me that stainless steel barbecue back there. That's real stainless steel, otherwise I wouldn't have taken it. So we're gonna see what we get out of that. So all in all, pretty good trip. We're gonna come back with a decent amount of scrap. All right, so we made it back to the shop. We're gonna start offloading this. First thing we're gonna do is Get all these transformers up on the table.
Okay, we'll get some head cam action going. Now, a lot of this stuff, we're just kind of cleaning up, pulling the glass out of it. Some of it's ready to go. Some of it is like high dollar extrusion like this, and the backs of these. And it really don't take much to clean these up. These are coming right out. They go all the way to the back side. A little bit of glue on there, but that's a nice chunk of extruded right there. Looks like. this I probably should have just broke the glass it's a nice piece of cast there uh, glass two nice pieces of cast garbage now these lights here they're mainly extruded oh look at all the ants I picked these up they were kind of buried in the ground Nice little chunks of extrusion on here, but got screws in it that I can't get out. So, I'm just gonna liberate it with the jaw. Try to save as much of that extruded as possible. Look at that. That's a nice heavy chunk there. That's pretty clean. That just needs uh, a ballast out of there. Bam! Clean. <laughs> Heavy ballast. Man, I hate flatheads. Oh. Stop using this. There's really no need. Did you ever find that screwdriver? Okay. 
Oh, what, what did I just take off? Oh, the whole thing. Okay. Oh, that stinks. Look at the size of that transformer. This thing got two capacitors in there? Alright, how does this thing come out of here? Oh, we gotta drop the whole thing from in here. And that is a little tiny screw right there. So you can't just get it off. Big nut driver. Smells like bugs. Always amazed me with these fixtures how not just the bugs but birds will get up in here and have like a whole freaking nest. Shit, that's ready to go. Wow. Look at this nastiness. Big old nasty piece of cardboard. Oh, look at all them bugs. You can't dump that out. <clears throat> Fried bugs. That's what Carl Schwab wants us all to eat. Bugs. And he said that you'll own nothing and be happy. <laughs> I don't think so. Ah. Take all these off too. Oh, there you go. Is that is that a piece of extruded aluminum? Oh yeah, that's a piece of extruded. Now I don't think I've ever seen a transformer like this. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if we can find a seam. So. The only way to get this out is gonna be to cut the coil. So on this one, what I would do, I'm gonna have to come in here, cut this, and then to make it easy, you come to the other side, and you don't have to cut down in there. You can cut it right here. That'll come off, that'll push through, and then you're gonna have to cut two pieces, drive that down. So that's gonna be a candidate for the grinder. We'll just set this up there. Okay, let's see if we can't recover a transformer. Hopefully. stinks too. <laughs> now 
Now you can go a little further, but I like to leave them just like that and sell that as brass breakage. Uh, just because there, you, there's a lot more material in there and weight wise. And then that there, somewhere in there, right there, see that? A little piece of uh, thing in there? That's mercury. Back to finding transformers. Now we need a small bit. Always 10 different sizes that you need to do these lights. The manufacturer wants to frustrate them. There's absolutely no reason that this fixture couldn't have been put together with the same screw all the way through. You know what I'm saying? What do we got here? Oh man. We got a clinger. Oh. oh! It's still clinging. Big old transformer. And they're in there with Allen keys. Ain't that a mofo? Dag, man. See, they're gonna keep you on your toes. They ain't gonna make it easy for you. You know? Let's get some cutters. Clean this up a little bit, see what we got. prepared steel send that over there for now oh I got a power right there prepared right oh, we need to get this done because I'm getting hungry man they opened up a new taco joint down the street um, well it's, it's the company's not new tacos Al Carbone they got a couple off our uh, uh, locations, and they just opened up one really close to my shop. So we're going to go check it out. As soon as we're done with this. Now All right. Big old thousand water. Oh, that feels like copper, too. You got it? Yep. Take a screwdriver. This is the easiest way to do this. Now you got that separated. This is what we need to get out. That steel plate. Looks like that blue nut driver. And you should be good to go. And then I'll show you how to recover the extruded off of this real easy. That's high dollar stuff, man. Oh, this may or may not come out. A lot of times you do one. Oh, this one's already coming out. And these little tabs are actually stainless. If you want to micro scrap and uh, recover that, these screws might even be stainless. Go earlier. Oh, I can't worry out. Oh, I missed one. plate's gonna come right out of there you miss one here what are they rusted no I got I got a different size right there I gotta get I think it's out I think it's stripped well if it's stripped then uh 
We'll just have to consider that within a 3%. That's pushing it, but what are you gonna do? Let me see. That bit might be worn out. That's free. What it is, is we're on an angle. Give me another extension. Give me that one right there. See that? Bam. Yeah, this is all sheet aluminum. There we go. Okay. Just need to put some length on that. <laughs> I made a video showing how using just these extensions will help you out a lot getting in tight, tight spots. Like, obviously you could use like a universal, but sometimes you can't. Or you don't want to have that thing wobbling around. You just put some more extension on it. And you see me smack in the back of the drill? That, that helps a lot for uh, stuff that's stuck or you only got one shot. A lot of times, man, especially with like rusty Phillips or anything where you're on the inside, you'll strip that shit out real quick. Well, that's it for that. Huh? Could we use it for anything? I'm sure we probably could, but we're going to use it for scrap. <laughs> okay, that's all the processed aluminum we got, and we got some uh, extruded down in here. So the box trailer is great for the fact that I could just throw shit in here, but the only problem is it's got to come out one way. You know, I can't just put a container next to it like I can my big trailer. And just throw the stuff right in there sometimes I, you know i gotta walk this stuff all the way back out usually past the gate because they put one on the side or whatever but still you got to come out um so what we're going to try to work on here in the near future is uh getting the forklift up and running so i can just get big bins and we'll be moving this stuff one time basically well who knows a couple times two times three times whatever it is getting it to the shop you know getting it to the shop and then getting it from the trailer to the processing and then um getting it back out to get sold off you know so a lot of times you're handling this stuff so you really got to try to minimize it as much as possible and right now we're not working as efficient as we could but we're working on it you know everything's a work in progress now we're going to get over here and fire up the press and uh, recover all the copper and aluminum we can out of this now these here, we recovered, you know, not too many more transformers than we already put on the table, but still a nice little chunk. I'm hoping for 80 to 100 pounds. If we can fill a five gallon bucket, you know, I'll be happy. But I know for a fact that a lot of these are gonna be aluminum. Woo, that's loud. Dug some of these transformers out the dirt. This feels like double aluminum. Definitely feels like aluminum. 
That feels like one copper, one aluminum. Well, that one is burned. And I could tell right away, that's aluminum, that's copper. This thing probably got hit by lightning. Oh. Woo. And it started delaminating. Now, what's happening here is, well, that one didn't break. It delaminated before the bottom broke. A lot of times, these things get stuck on here, and that's why you see me hitting it right here, because it actually opens it up, and even though that bottom didn't break, I don't have to send it back over here and give it the hammer treatment. Oh. We're almost getting a full barrel. Oh, that one delaminated good. The whole side did, see that? So the only thing you can do there is give that the hammer treatment or if it keeps delaminating, you gotta hit it with a grinder. Even with this 25 ton cylinder, this thing's at the verge of not breaking some of these sometimes. Now where's my hammer? big boy she might not want to break that <laughs> That doesn't mean we're selling aluminum as steel.
That one feels like double copper. Oh yeah, I can tell by the style. Oh, and it delaminated. Ugh. At least the bottom broke. Still heavy. Okay, as you can see, the Okay, as you can see, the Copper King absolutely shredded through those transformers. These ones here are cutters and uh, this one here definitely needs to be cut. This one here is one of those ones with the lock on it. I call it a lock. Uh, it don't like the press. The press actually broke half of it, but this side uh, didn't want to. It's very hard on the press. Here's another one of those. Um, and how you can tell those, usually they got marks on them, like little indents all around them. So I, I missed this one because I couldn't see the indents. So I don't know if we're going to get to cutting these tonight. We're going to get on some wire. Steve's over here grinding on the inlets. Trying to make them a little smoother so it doesn't catch the uh, catch the wire. Yeah, they look good. Are they smooth? Yeah. Might have to run that flappy paddle in there. I could. Oh. Yeah, polished and just hit that like sharp edge at the yeah. bottom. Put the sand in roll. Yeah, that's gonna make a big difference because a lot of times the wire it, it's you you know you're pulling that wire from down here. You know. Yeah, I gotta take that out. You're right. Yeah. So he brought his own tools to do that, which uh, is awesome. It's nice to have someone working with you that has their own tools and gets exactly what you're trying to do. You know, we might have to do that to this here too. Not now, but you know. So we're gonna get set up on that and uh, start running some of this spaghetti. I don't know how much of this we're gonna get through, but uh, we'll get a, a little decent chunk of this out of here and go through that pile over there. I think I got a big chunk of aluminum. But before that, we're gonna clean up the table and, and blow it off. We kind of went around the world of scrap today. We did a whole bunch of aluminum light fixtures, recovered a bunch of cast and sheet metal. Then we broke down some transformers. We recovered some copper and aluminum and steel. And now we're on to some copper wire. We got everything set up over here. And uh, I'm just gonna start sending it. And hopefully Steve can keep up. <laughs> See how these uh, these little uh, improvements seem to be doing all right. It's coming right off. It's not. Pull it here. Oh, you got it. You got to pull it as fast as the machine is coming out. Oh, I caught that just in time. Oh no. All right, I'm just going to have to send it. Oh, that's a different size. Oh. 
No, I did. Through my belt. Maybe we'll have better luck with this red one. I'm gonna send it down there. where that unspooling machine would come in handy. Or two people on the backside. You see he's already struggling because the piece is too long. That's why when I do spaghetti, 10 foot is where I like to be, or less. And we were just discussing a, a way of making a shear here to cut this. All right, look, this time, when you pull this, you have to keep the tension as tight as it's coming out. You can't let slack. Okay. It comes up fast. All right, already twisted. All right, don't. pull on yours. Well, just, just try. <laughs> yeah. You just got to keep up with it. Oh, shit. Man, we having all kinds of issues. You ready? Oh, I lost it. See, this is kind of a clusterfuck because I'm trying something that I normally don't do. Normally, I just keep sending it through that machine as fast as I can possibly feed it. And I do all the cutting to keep it from getting too crazy on the backside. Me stopping this machine, to, in my opinion, is costing time. Ready? Keep it tight. Keeping up with this machine is uh, a full-time job. I'm just gonna start sending it like I normally do. I'm just gonna send it to you like I normally do, man, and cut it in pieces. Oh, that's coming off nice. Oh! I think those, um, that grinding is definitely helping a little bit. size down which probably gonna have to lower this and lower that 
see how we do. Oh, nice. See if I can't squeeze it a little harder on that backside. coming out pretty good. getting a little off center because this one here is picking up and this one's not so we'll just give this a little help see if that helps oh, we went too much now we shifted the whole thing over that might be these freaking loosening up so that back down yeah we're not centered but it's cutting it uh-oh
communication cable. It's gonna go with number two. Big old fat boy. I'll have to do that a little later. Spool. Let's see if we can't run the spool. Woo! Look at that. It come through the thing. Oh, oh. Man, we having all kinds of issues sometimes man I just like to throw that shit on the floor and I can see all the wire all right I know what's happening here Let's see if that helps Oh yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. I'm looking for a certain size. Looks like I might have to switch to this smaller stuff. Oh, here's the size I want. Yeah. Ugh. Switching to brown. Normally, I just like to stick to one color, one size. I might have to actually dump this out. I'm kind of getting a little... It looks like... Uh, I bought some number two as number one. That's not good. That's why you gotta check your wire. Know what you're buying. It's a little tangled when you're longer than 10 feet, huh? <laughs> thicker stuff is over here. I should turn the cart around. <laughs> hey, man, here, let me help you out. It's already done. <laughs> okay. Find an end, usually just make an end. 
I'm always spending too much time untangling this shit. Oh, I'm talking to myself, man. <laughs> Just start somewhere else. Okay, there we have it pretty much stripped down most of that stuff that I was gonna strip I was going through all this pile you know there was sitting over here in the corner and gathering up everything that I was just gonna send because it was starting to get kind of tedious with that spaghetti wire we stripped a pretty good amount of it but uh, I totally forgot I had this other barrel here so what I'm gonna do is just kind of pick through this anything like this size or that wire right there um, I'll keep the rest of the stuff I'm just gonna send to the scrap yard along with this insulation all in all it's a pretty good day we blew through all that stuff got a little bit of number two copper so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, load this stuff up in the trailer I got a bunch of ballast over here I think I'm gonna take this drum uh, this is all the electronic ballast. Oh, that's copper. And uh, we still have one, two, three, four, five, six barrels of ballast to go through. And uh, there was a couple more transformers. They're cutters, though. So we'll get them on, a, on the next round. And then we have that whole bin that's kind of exploding at the seams we need to go through. So... There's still plenty more scrap in here that needs to be taken out. I'm going to try to finish out what's in here before I bring anything else in. I'm trying to get everything out of here so I can get a little bit more organized, finish my shelves, and uh, that way we can get on some projects in here. But for now, we're going to take a trip to the scrap yard. <laughs> oh, and we got some nuggets over here. Some big old piece of 500 and whatnot need to be cut up by hand and... You know, we'll keep those trinkets. We're not going to send that as number one insulate. Okay, here are the numbers for that job. We had 2,576 pounds of batteries at 20 cents a pound, $515.20. Now, I did keep a couple of those batteries back, to, uh, some of the big ones to check them. Uh, so we're a little light there, uh, but we did good on uh, what we paid for them. Number one insulated wire, 166 pounds, dollar 96 per pound, 325 dollars and 36 cents. Cast aluminum, had a lot of cast, 688 pounds, 45 cents a pound, uh, 309 dollars and 60 cents. Number two copper, 146 pounds. There's a little bit more than I thought we were going to get out of that. 260 a pound. $379.60. Old sheet aluminum, 228 pounds at 50 cents a pound, $114 even. Uh, we had some Bear Bright, 108 pounds, 
285 a pound, $307.80. Number two insulated wire, 57 uh, pounds, 70 cents a pound, and uh, 39.90. And then finally, we had some extrusion, 74 pounds, 75 cents a pound, 55.50 for a total of $2,081. And 86 cents now I did pay around seven hundred dollars for all that and had about hundred dollars in fuel and a hundred dollars in labor so we're looking at 900 bucks and that was for um, all together a day and a half it only took me like half a day to get it we spent a good decent amount of time breaking that down a uh, full day's worth of work uh, I think we did pretty good now stay tuned because uh, we got uh, so we Broke down some big transformers. We're going to be stripping some wire here in a little bit. But we've been breaking down generators. We already got a big old stator broke down over there. Two, three. And we recovered this motor. He thinks he's going to utilize it or sell it or something. <laughs> we'll find out. But we got one more. Hopefully, uh, we'll get that out of here tonight, and then we'll get all of our space under here and get this cleaned out, all this stuff down, so I can get the other shelf up and get rid of these uh, columns. And then we're going to have to decide what we're going to do with the 50 horsepower uh, rotophase. Is it something I should keep or scrap it? So let me know in the comments on that. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard.